um, I came across this article yesterday and of course I couldn't help but uh, make a video to um, discuss my concerns and also read the article to you in regards to Dr. Ravi Zakaria's um, situation and by the way you can find this on the site um, just type Dr. Ravi Zakaria's and you should be able to find this on the internet it says Christian apologist Ravi Zacharias has received a grim prognosis on the progression of his cancer. Of course, I'm not going to go through um, the entire thing, but um, it says here, medically speaking, they have done all they're able to. So uh, he was sent home because um, scientifically speaking, medically speaking, um, the doctors are not able to help him. Right. So he was sent home um, basically to to die, you know, to wait until um, it's time for him to leave and go be with the Lord um, because they say medically speaking there's really nothing they can do if you don't know who Dr. Ravi Zacharias is, you can simply search him um, but I do tell you he's a very important person in the body of Christ, which is why I'm making this video um, he's such an important person in the body of Christ, such an important person in the world. He has really impacted uh, the world. He has impacted the body of Christ. Um, he um, has converted Muslims. You know, he has made Muslims become Christian, um, Buddhists, um, atheists. Um, he's a man of so much wisdom. And I know he's labeled as one of the top Christian apologists, even though if you look at his life and the things that he has accomplished, you'd find out that he's actually more than just an apologist. He's an activist. You know, that's how I see him. And I'm grateful to God for his life and the beautiful things that he has done, um, the impact. Of course, he has impacted me also, which is why I'm, you know, um, sharing this video. Um, and the many lives he has impacted um, young people through his books and um, one of the things that um, distinguish him is his love and compassion and calmness when he responds to questions you'd see um, God's um, love expressed through him you know and you know he's not doing it for fame or for anything you know whatsoever he, he does it because of the love of God you know and he has so much passion he wants um, young people to, um, to, to to come to the knowledge of the truth you know so Dr. Ravi is a, a very important person like I said a very important person in the church um, today such an important person and um, one of my uh, my conclusions when I listened to him talk was that he's a man of so much wisdom I want you to watch this video listen to to the way he responds to an atheist who asked a question about free will listen to the way he responded to the question so powerful may a scientist and an atheist and um, my uh, question is since the Bible has been scientifically disproven as far as all the claims you know through evolution the theory of evolution uh, archaeology you know Noah's Ark Adam of Eve, since we know this didn't happen because of our science, I guess science nowadays, um, my question is, how do we have, according to the Bible, how do we have free will if God is this omniscient being that knows everything about us, everything we will do, and he pretty much knows our outcome before we're even created. So he creates us knowing everything we'll do. Since we can't surprise him by our actions, we, are in, we have no free will. Our choices have been predetermined and that the act of judgment is completely immoral because he knows what we're going to do. Nothing can surprise him. That's my question. Issue. That is actually even what people like Dawkins will concede, or uh, Pinker, you read Stephen Pinker and the others. So totally determined. So the question is, were you free to ask this question? Yep. Um, I don't believe any of us actually have free will because we are strictly material. So you're actually, as a machine automaton, asking me this question? We are all made up of our past experiences. Okay, but you're not free then. You're not free. You're not making a truth statement. My truth statement. I mean, what I'm saying is our memories and our states. No, no, no. no. Hear me carefully. Okay. If you're totally determined, yes. you're pre-wired to think the way you do. Nature versus nurture, yes. Sorry? Nature versus nurture. Nature versus nurture. Yes. 
Regardless, okay. the nurture may provide a different environment, but sure. the nature is you're hardwired yes. to come out with a certain conclusion. Out of flux, nothing but flux. You know, what you put into the computer, the ultimately is going to come out. But you have to ask yourself, are you making a truth claim? If you are making a truth claim, you're rising above the bondage of total subjectivity. And the moment you claim a truth claim, you're violating determinism. And so I just leave you with that. And let's, let's meet afterwards. Hey, 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 Ethan, we want to chat with you. You know, you're the kind of guy we come here for. So afterwards, you, you come here and we'll chat with you. Come here, give me a shake. Hand. Bless you, man. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Ah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And by the way, um, that was just uh, a clip. Uh, you can watch the full video on the internet. And you can watch so many videos on the internet. Um, so much wisdom. So much you can learn from Dr. Ravi Zagrai. So much you can learn. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I was concerned. Um, which is my main reason for making this video. Um, to express my concern. Um, I, I was going through the comments on Instagram to see what um, Christians have to say um, about him because of course his impact is great and you have so many people um, expressing their love, prayers and kindness which when you think about it is what Dr. Ravi Zagrais and his family um, need right now, prayers, right? And because his impact is great Right, you have so many people sending in their messages, their love, kindness is so, 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 so beautiful. And of course, I did the same, same thing. And I spent some time yesterday praying for Dr. Ravi. Uh, but when there's a problem, it's so important to address the problem. You know, on on the comments, of course, you have the uh, majority of the questions um, positive, and. Um, in fact, almost all, all the questions are positive, but um, the problem that I saw, which is what I want to address, is this. Um, you have Christians who are commenting um, things like, Oh, Dr. Ravi fought a good fight of faith. He has finished the race. He has finished his course, and now it's time for him to... What are you talking about? What do you mean he has finished the race? What do you mean he has finished the course? For goodness sake, he's still alive. Yes, he was diagnosed with cancer. Yes, um, the doctors gave, gave up on him. According to science, there's nothing the doctors can do. So he was sent home. My question to you is this. Who is the final say? Is it the doctor or is it Jesus Christ? And of course you might say, well, yeah, it's Jesus Christ. But do you really believe that? Do you believe Jesus is the final say? You know, so it's a problem when you have people saying things like, oh, he has fought. Who said it's the end of his ministry? And even if um, his ministry has come to a close in the eyes of God, who said it has to be through cancer? Who said it has to be through any disease? For your information, sickness, God does not make his children sick. He doesn't. Do you know what sickness is? Allow me to tell you, sickness is what um, we call incipient death. In other words, gradual death. When someone is sick, it's because they are dying gradually. Where did sickness come from? Sickness, and why does sickness exist? Sickness exists because of death. Why does death exist? Death exists because of sin. We all know how sin came to the world of men, right? But we should also know what Jesus did to sin on the cross. If Jesus really, um, if he really neutralized and paralyzed and destroyed sin on the cross, then um, he did the same thing to sickness and death, right? And um, what did Jesus say? Jesus said, in my name you will cast out demons. In my name. If you read the Bible from the book of Genesis to Revelation, there's no such thing as the, the, uh, the gift of casting out demons. It's not there. There's no gift for casting out demons. The only gift that we have as the church is the name of Jesus, the blessed name of Jesus, because there's power in the name of Jesus. And so as Christians, as the church, we should learn to use our authority. We have so much power because there's so much power in the name of Jesus. Right, and so when we pray, we pray for healing. We say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Dr. Ravi Zagarias is healed of that cancer. 
Don't you believe in miracles? Don't you believe that God can heal him? Uh, Dr. Rafi is 74. Who said he can't live more than that? Who said so? Who said he can't um, get healed and um, continue his ministry, um, impact even more lives? Right? And so it's a problem when you, of course, you say it with good intentions. Um, that's true. You say it with good in intentions. But it's not right because you're not God. You're not God to decide when someone's ministry has come to a close. When someone is diagnosed with um, a sickness or if the church undergoes whatever, whatever persecution, you are supposed to pray. And you pray with faith. Right? You pray with faith. And so you're not supposed to say things like Dr. Ravi has, has fought a good fight of faith. It's not time for that scripture now. Uh, when Paul was saying that, it, it was because he was come to an end. Who said Dr. Ravi has come to an end? Right? Who said so? You know? And so what you are supposed to pray about now is that Dr. Ravi um, should receive his healing. Right? Because I believe, I believe in miracles. You know, I believe that God can heal him. I do. But it's important that um, everyone in the body of Christ believes in this. Jesus was a medical worker. Christians are medical workers according to the Bible, right? We're medical workers. And so it's not time to give up. It's not time to give up. You know, it's time to stand strong in faith and believe, you know, and believe that all things work together for good. The Bible says all things work together for good to them that love God. All things work together for good, right? All things. And so it's, it's, it's so important. That's so important. Um, so important. That's all I have to say. You know, there's so much to say in regards to Ravi Zacharias. Um, there's so much to say. But um, for the purpose of this video, this is all I have to say. Thank you so much. I want you to share this video. Share this video so that um, the church comes to understand that the church is a place of power. We're not supposed to say um, things that, uh, you, you know, we're not supposed to just say whatever. We're supposed to um, declare um, God's word. What does God's word says? My question to you is this. If Jesus was walking this earth physically and you came to Jesus and said, um, Dr. Ravi Zacharias was diagnosed with cancer, what do you think Jesus was going to do about it? What would he say? Right? What would he say? What did Jesus say in the Bible? What did Jesus say when um, um, he was told, it was, it was told about people that were sick? What did he say? You know, and so it's important that we um, respond to situation. It's, it's 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 important that we do things the way Jesus would have done them. What would Jesus say if he was told that um, Ravi Zagrai is, is 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 diagnosed with cancer? I'll tell you what he was supposed to do. Jesus was going to heal him, right? That that's what he was going to do. Because we see in the Bible that Jesus was a miracle worker. He performed so many miracles. That's exactly what the church is. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Right? So it's not nice. It's not right to say, oh, Dr. Ravi has fought a good fight of faith. No, he's still alive and God can heal him. Thank you so much. My name is John Preacher. God bless you. Of these solemn supermen and self-styled imperial diplomatists stands the gigantic figure of one person because of whom, by whom, in whom, and through whom alone mankind might still have peace, the person of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, surrender to him, love him, Follow him, serve him, live for him, and take his message wherever you go, because these solemn supermen and imperial diplomatists will someday, someday litter some desert terrain or some museum somewhere. They can dance all they want on the grave of Jesus. He's not there. He rose again. He describes your heart. He provides for your malady. He equips you in suffering. He puts meaning into every moment in history. And he conquers death through the resurrection from the grave. Those are only a handful of thoughts. The 